models are available. However, even in those days, Peter, and yes, Paul as well, were urging Christian families to show the godless how to live in a family reflecting the love of Jesus Christ, a family displaying mutual respect and forbearance. Even now, in an increasingly secularized, godless world, we Christians are called upon to show in our most intimate family relationships the great commandment of Jesus to his disciples, love one another as I have loved you. Selflessly, completely with fidelity and with mutual respect. Yes, St. Peter, who was himself a loving family man, later I saw the house in which he lived with his wife and presumably his family. He was a loving family man. Peter tells us that we, as followers of Jesus Christ, are to conduct ourselves honorably in marriage so that we may be effective examples. And we're to do so not for ourselves but for others, for the godless, so that they too may come to know and love our Lord and Savior. Thus might all be saved on the day of the Lord. Having provided excellent examples of how we might serve the Lord honorably in civic affairs, in the workplace, and in our family lives, Peter then pours forth a beautiful summary of theme from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount and the third and fourth Psalm. So listen to these words. These are words to live by. Finally, all of you have unity of spirit, sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil, or abuse for abuse, but on the contrary, repay with a blessing. It's for this fact that you were called, that you might inherit a blessing. For those who desire life and desire to see good days, let them keep their tongues from evil, their lips from speaking deceit. Let them turn away from evil and do good. Let them seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. First Peter 3, 8 through 12, words to live by. So let us now turn to our Lord in prayer, to our Lord Jesus Christ, whose eyes are on the righteous and whose ears are always open to their prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we do not desire nor deserve to be called self-righteous, no, we are not righteous. Nor do we presume that we can in any way earn our salvation through self-righteous acts. But Lord, we do have faith in you. We know that you purchased us with your precious blood. We know that we are your servants, Lord. We are members of your royal priesthood. We know that we are your chosen ones, Lord, chosen to live with you forever and to serve as examples to others so that they too may come to believe and assure their salvation through Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, be with us as we participate actively in civic affairs. Guide us to use the talents that you've given us to work for freedom and justice. Lord Jesus, be with us in our workplaces, wherever they may be. Help us to be patient, to live by your principles, even though we may suffer for it, as you suffered for us. And Lord Jesus, be with us also in our family situations, whatever they may be. Let our family lives reflect your commandment to love one another as you have loved us. Dear Lord, we do love you. We love you with all our hearts, our strength, our souls, our minds. Thank you for first loving us, O Savior. Let us be your instruments, Lord. 
your ambassadors in the world of sin. Take our lives and let them be yours. Help us, dear Jesus, to bring others to you one by one through personal example till all the world is yours. Come, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. The Lord bless you. Keep you the Lord be kind and gracious.